Let's go say hi to Glenelg first. Hello. Yeah, boy. We're gonna take him out a little bit more, I think. We've been keeping him out of the action, partly because, you know, he doesn't have any sort of dialogue to add to the scene. Well, not for the most part, anyway. But also, I think, because, you know, it's, it's part of... Uh, he's part of Nathan's home. And I think Nathan partially wants to protect that part of his home, you know? <sighs> so who are we going to speak with first? Well, let's see how Morgan is progressing with her mother's book, shall we? she got to find out something by now. I know what we said at the end of the last session that I was going to speak to her, but I decided to give her a bit more time with it. Morgan, how do you do? What do you wish of me? Um, I would like to ask you something. If you must. Never mind. Let's try again. <laughs> what do you wish of me? Personal. We are in camp, so tis as good a time as any. Mm-hmm. Never mind. She clearly doesn't have enough time for that yet, and to be honest, I'm very glad about that. Um, it's nice that the game sort of has a sort of inbuilt, maybe some kind of inbuilt timer, which means that Morgan is still reading her mother's book, so she doesn't have any news on it yet. I'm assuming we're going to get some sort of character quest from it, you know? Or maybe we won't. Maybe it's nothing. Maybe I'm overthinking this. Oh, I don't know. Hey, dwarven folk. You and your friends are formidable folk, indeed. It's good to have you along on the road. We are indeed. <laughs> um, Class, have you heard any rumours? The dark spawn have attacked Lothering. I don't think everyone even had fled by the time they came either. Word has it they swarmed the entire area, making off with prisoners and burning down the buildings. And then they were gone. Just as quick. I wonder if there's anyone left. I heard some chanters were going to head down south, maybe to try to find some survivors. I'm not holding out hope myself. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Take it for what it is. Lothering was lost. Oh, wow. Well, that, that has honestly jarred me. I didn't like Lothering very much, but we were there and we hung out and... <sighs> We've got to stop these darkspawn. <sighs> Let me see your wares, man. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected. And with your discount. My yummy, yummy disc. Does nobody sell health bottles anymore? I must not, there must be a drought in the land or something like that, I swear to gods. So we can afford the backpack now. Uh, we can't afford any manuals for anything like ranger or anything like that. Can I become a ranger? I don't know. Is that a fighter thing? Uh, white wood. Ooh. Uh, this is a good amount of damage. Um, not as good critical chance. Better armor penetration. Way better range. Uh, strength modifiers, whatever. Chance to avoid missile attacks uh, with the fox's bow. Mm, I think the one I have is actually a little bit better with the critical chance and such like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a better tier. Oh, wait. Tier 5. You, white bow. Blah, blah, blah. What's you? Use tier 3. How about the uh, iron bark longbow? 8.40 is a pretty big jump. We're making a load. Actually, this is worth it, isn't it? Ooh, new bow for Nathan. Exciting. We get his range back as well. It's, it's really good. Um, the fox's bow is pretty badass. We should probably keep that and give it to somebody who can make good use of it. Maybe Liliana, although we're getting her with the daggers more often than not these days. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. <laughs> What else we got? Warden's Longsword. Did I sell you this? That's really unfortunate. That's really inconsiderate of me. Um, that stuff is handy, but way too expensive. Uh, nah. Useless. Bloody useless. But thanks very much. New bow for Joe. For Nathan, I should say. Bang. Oh, looks good. Nice and green. Yummy. <laughs> Oh, Levi Dryden. Sten, any smart-ass thing to say to me now? Yes. Probably not. I have a question. I am hardly surprised. Let's go through this motion again. Very well. <laughs> Speak, then. Lost, lost. Then I suggest we move on. Okay, let's go. As you wish. Le sigh. <laughs> Liliana, how are you? The stars are out. They are, yes. Um, 
there is still beauty to be found in this world. Well, as I covered in my Fallout New Vegas Let's Play, I do love the night sky, so let's make a big deal of it. There is still beauty to be found in this world. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just read the last option. So, go help Alistair make supper, for fuck's sake, Liliana. <sighs> It comforts me to know that the stars will remain untouched by the blight. Hmm. That whatever happens down here, they will shine eternally. Their light undimmed. There is a story about that cluster of stars over there. Do you know it? Elindra and her soldier? No, that cluster of stars over there. Care to be more specific about that, Liliana? <laughs> um, no, I haven't heard it. Could you tell me? A long time ago, there lived a fair maiden called Elindra. She had many suitors, but spurned them all for she did not love them. One day, Elindra was sitting by her window in her father's castle, singing and dreaming, when her lovely voice caught the attention of a young soldier. Entranced by her song, the soldier drew near to Elindra's window. As their eyes met, he fell in love with her, and she with him. When Elindra told her father about the man she had chosen, he was furious, for Elindra was high-born, but her love nothing more than a common soldier. To keep them apart, he had Elindra imprisoned in the highest tower of his castle, and sent her soldier to the wars. Alas, not a month had passed before news of the soldier's death reached Elindra. Alone in her tower, Elindra wept for her love, and beseeched the gods to deliver her from this cruel world. So earnest was her plea, that the gods themselves were moved. They gathered Elindra into their arms and lifted her high into the heavens, where she became a star. The gods also raised up the soul of Elindra's soldier love, and there he dwells, across the horizon from her. The band of stars between them is a river of Elindra's tears, cried for her lost love. They say that when Elindra has cried enough, she will be able to cross the river to be reunited with her soldier. What a heartwarming and yet somehow horrible tale. <laughs> the stars are not made of tears. It'd be such a killjoy nation. <laughs> Why do stories always end so badly? <sighs> well, I suppose it is a beautiful story. This story is one of my favorites. A tale of a love so great and so enduring that it defies death and moves the gods to action. Sometimes I ask myself, does such a love exist? Can it exist? I don't know. If it may exist, but it never lasts. If we lose hope in love, then we are truly lost. Few loves are so powerful. Real love is a mix of lust and attachment, nothing more. <laughs> Ever the cynic there. Hmm. If you lose hope in love, we are truly lost. Oh my god, that is cheesy, but it is kind of true. <laughs> Not just love of people, love of everything. Love of life, love of... Grass, love of mountains, love of Sten. Hi, Sten. <laughs> uh, it is kind of true, but I reckon you're going to take this a different way. But whatever, I'm hitting on you, so let's let's say something cheesy. I never expected you to say that. It is a pleasant surprise. <laughs> really? Don't tell the others I said that. I'm secretly a terrible romantic. <laughs> um... Why is it a surprise? I'm secretly a terrible romantic. <laughs> yeah, I'm secretly a terrible romantic. I have to say there is a certain severity to you. Finding a person behind that all is nice. Maybe you should let your softer side show more often. Sometimes, following your heart, not your head, leads you to remarkable places. Hmm. Following my heart leads me towards my navel. Oh, that conversation was going so well. I think I ruined it. <laughs> ah, let's talk to Wynn. Is there something you need? Not really. I just wanted to chat. Finally, we get an actual conversation tree with you. Ah, so, why didn't you want to stay at the tower? Not that I'm not pleased to have you along. The circle is in good hands. Irving knows what to do, and he doesn't need me underfoot. For now, I will support those that battle the Darkspawn. I do feel I left things unfinished in Ostagar. There is so much left to do, and I would be part of it. Okay, yeah. No, no, I'm actually uh, glad for your company. The Grey Wardens, all 
two of you need all the help you can get. <laughs> I will see this through to the bitter end, and after that, if I am still left standing, then I will return to the circle. Yeah, sit yourself down for a nice comfy armchair, nice fireplace, s'mores. I never had s'mores. It's an American thing. I don't actually know what s'mores are. Could somebody, could some American guy in the comments please tell me what s'mores are? I would love to know. I'll probably have wikipedia it by the time I finish this session. <laughs> uh, just after, I should say. I'm not going to tab out or anything. That would be unprofessional of me. Um, right, okay. I want to make sure you really wanted this. You're, you're a decisive winner. I already knew that you'd made your decision. Get along fine. And I'm sure you will be able to return if you so choose. I bet you can pull through this win. You're still strong, you know? I believe you've got some ways to go yet. Perhaps. Jeez. This is... I'm inspiring everybody today. <laughs> 25, wow. Got my buddies. Still stands like... <laughs> Plus 10 isn't bad. Did I do something? Morgan, 70. Are you sure? Are you... Really? <laughs> I mean, I'm fine with it. I just thought, you know, I gave everybody gifts last session. And nobody seemed that impressed. <laughs> okay. Why do we always talk to you last, Alistair? Hi there. You know, maybe this isn't the best time to be thinking about this, but I have something to ask you. Mm -hmm. Chances are we'll be heading to dinner room soon. And when we're there, I wonder if we might be able to look someone up. The, your, uh... Who? Uh, <laughs> you have a friend outside of this social circle? I'm hurt. <sighs> no, it's not Logan. You have a friend outside the Grey Wardens? I'm not talking about a friend, exactly. And no, it's not that sort of friend either. The thing is, I have a sister, a half-sister. I told you about my mother, right? She was a servant at Redcliffe Castle and she had a daughter. Only, I never knew about her. I don't think she knew about me either. They kept my birth a secret, after all. But after I became a Great Warden, I did some checking, and, well, I found out she's still alive in Denerim. Why did I have it in my head that you had a half-sister? Or that you had a sister or, or something? Um, have I picked that up along the road, or am I thinking of a completely different character? Well, no, absolutely, man. We can check it out, because, I mean, I know we've got important stuff to do. But, you know, whatever, whatever helps. Um, she's still alive in Denerim. Um, have you contacted her? No. I thought about writing her, but I never did. And then we were called down to Ostagar and I never got the chance. She's the only real family I have left. The only family not also mixed up in the whole royal thing. I've just been thinking that maybe it's time I went to see her. With the blight coming and everything, I, I don't know if I'll ever get another chance to see her. Maybe I can help her. Warn her about the danger, I don't know. That was it, that was it. That's why I knew you had a sister, because in the fade, you dreamt you were with your sister. I didn't think anything of it at the time, but you dreamt you one big happy family. But I thought, how could you have a sister if you're Kaelin's, not Kaelin's bastard child, uh, Kaelin's bastard brother? King Marek's bastard child. It's all very convoluted, Alistair. <laughs> um, help her, warn her about the danger, I don't know. I don't know, man. The Dark Spawn. I guess a lot of people don't know, particularly in Denerim. If anywhere doesn't know, it will be Denerim. Um. Well, if you want to, we could try. Could we? I'd appreciate that. If something happened to her and I never went to at least see her, I don't know if I could forgive myself. Yeah. Her name is Goldana, and I think she remarried but still lives just outside the alienage. If we're in the area, then... Well, it's worth a look. The alienage. Well, that's a word that just rolls off the tongue. I'm assuming we'll find out what that is. <sighs> Glenelg, you're making one hell of a fuss over there. Are you alright? Yeah? Huh, well, let's pet him. Yay. Ah, <laughs> good boy. And on that note, I believe I will call it for the session. Why is this flashing at me? I don't know. I don't know. It's, um, it just makes sense. Oh, oh, stop, 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 stop. Close it, close it. I don't want to go anywhere right now. 
So, wow. Redcliffe, Connor, Lady Assault, it's been a hell of a day. I feel like we finished up quite a few things. I'm really glad that Connor did not make a move whilst we were away at the circle. I really thought he would. I, I thought that's why they gave me so many... You know, why they warned me off that Connor would not remain passive forever, but... They didn't. They simply did not. I feel that the session's gone very well. In the next episode... We may travel to Denerim, however, I may start doing some of these other side quests. We're getting rather full here. And now that we have a little bit of downtime where I'm not feeling constantly under pressure to get back to make sure that, you know, not everybody's dead in Redcliffe, now it's only Arlemian that could potentially die. <laughs> I really hope there isn't some kind of inbuilt timer or something like that. Um, maybe we'll do some of the Chanter's board quests and such like that. You know, every little bit helps, right? Every little bit of good. <laughs> in the meantime, thank you very much for watching, everybody. And I will see you in the next episode. I'm trying to get a good camera angle. Uh, 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 there we go. <laughs>